you know, sometimes you see these YouTube videos where it's like one chord that you can use over every tune or whatever. And most of it is total, <laughs> but there is this one chord shape that is kind of mythical and it actually doesn't get enough due in my opinion. It looks and sounds like this. And you can use it like this. Or this. Or this. Here at Open Studio, we love to give whimsical, stupid names to very complicated subjects. So we call this, naturally, the unicorn chord. Now there is a PDF for this session. You're gonna to wanna to download that so you can follow all three different versions of how we use this beautiful structure. And it is beautiful. Uh, you can find that in the description. And if you like what you see, you like Okay, this one beautiful shape can be used in three different ways. A the tonic diminished. So that's a diminished chord based off of the root of whatever key you're in. Uh, beautiful, effective, common. Two, the flat three diminished. So this is when you're usually going from a three chord down to a two chord, use this flat three diminished as a transition. This unicorn shape works beautiful for that. And lastly, the flat five diminished. This usually works when you're walking up from the root to the four, and then from the four to the five, in between that four and the five. This unicorn chord works beautifully over all three of these. And we're gonna look at all three of these today. One more thing before we get going, in one of the examples today, there is a mythical unicorn. A unicorn, I'm not gonna tell you where it is, but it's the same shape that we're using all day, just in a very hidden way. If you can spot where the hidden unicorn is, the mythical beast itself, uh, I'll give you 10 internet points. So here is the basic shape. We're gonna start with the tonic diminished. It is a basic diminished triad with a major seven on top. Sometimes you'll see this notated as say B flat diminished major seven. I almost never see it notated like that. It's usually just B flat diminished and you see there's an A on top. If anything, you see this written more often as A over B flat. When you see A over B flat, they usually mean this, like A triad over B flat means this kind of unicorn shape. It's such a common shape and such a beautiful way to use this diminished sound. So again, you have a straight up diminished triad and then this perfect fourth on top that is actually the major seven of whatever key we're in. So we call this the tonic diminished because in the key of B flat, it's built from B flat. The function of this is gorgeous. Its function is to resolve upon itself. Its function is to resolve from B flat diminished to B flat major. All of these notes moving chromatically or down in steps if you're going down to the six, it is a gorgeous movement and you just see it all the time. You hear it all the time from some of your favorite players and it is always, almost always this shape. So the very first example that springs to mind is from the beautiful tune, Spring is Here. It's baked into the tune. So the melody is the major seven, and you often hear the harmony underneath that as a diminished chord, a diminished triad with that major seven on top, resolving to itself, to the tonic major. It's so beautiful. And again, you might, add a G somewhere in here if you wanted to, right? Which would be like the double flat seven or whatever. But why? Just do the regular old diminished triad, put that major seven on top, the unicorn chord. It's a beautiful voicing resolving to its, itself specifically. It's so gorgeous. The next way that you hear the tonic diminished is as a substitution. So you'll often hear this like on the tune Misty, but you hear this in other tunes as well. Uh, but the tune Misty starts with, you know, some people play it just straight major seven. A lot of folks play some kind of tonic diminished. Here we have the unicorn shape in a drop two. So I'm taking the second note from top, that F flat, and I'm dropping it to the left hand just to widen out the voicing. And then we resolve it to itself, you know? So again, you might not resolve it to itself in this case. You can go straight to that 
if you'd like, to that F minor 7 or that 5 minor 7. But listen to that. That's what it's all about. And one more very cool use of this tonic diminished is actually as a dominant chord. So it's over the five of whatever key you're in. Here's all the things you are in the key of B flat. You know, typically, you might play just an F7 with an A on top as the melody, but listen to how it sounds as the unicorn chord, as the tonic diminished resolving unto itself. Listen again. One more time. Listen to that. I mean, it's just gorgeous. So there it is. There's our first example, the tonic diminished. Our second way to use this unicorn shape is the flat three diminished. An important note. It's the same shape, it's the same notes. We're not starting on D flat, we're still using B flat, D flat, F flat, and A. In that key of B flat, this is the voicing that we're gonna start with. You could definitely use other inversions if you'd like from that diminished harmony, but you can also just use the diminished triad built from the tonic of whatever key you're in with that major seven on top on the root, on the flat three diminished, and on the flat five diminished. All three sound amazing. The flat three diminished, that D flat in the bass is most often used going to a two chord. You could of course use it going to the three for sure, but you hear it most often going to say a C minor seven. Ah. Let's check out some examples. The first example is quite a famous one, My Romance. Check it out. So we go to the one chord, the two chord, the three chord famously unicorn that major seven over that d flat diminished going to the two chord i have it in drop two again and a big tenth spread if this is too much you can simply move that low note up an octave works just as well isn't that beautiful that's the unicorn that major seven on top of that tonic diminished, even when the tonic is over that inversion of the flat three. This is the most common way you see the flat three diminished, between the three and the two chord, right? In any kind of cadence, you see that. Another famous example of the flat three, body and soul, again, we're in the key of B flat. A little playing around with the melody here. We're kind of up halfway into the A section. Again, this D flat diminished seven, this unicorn shape, again, this same shape, again in drop two, and the second note that E is dropped down, but it's still this B flat diminished triad with the A on top. Right, knowing that, knowing that this shape is the shape that they want, that sounds the best, you can really, you can use this whenever you want. And honestly, even if you're comping, It sounds so good. It adds so much melodic movement using that major seven on top of that tonic diminished, in this case, in the inversion on the flat three diminished. Back to all the things you are in the key of B flat. This was actually just a couple of bars right before we did our tonic diminished. There is a flat three diminished. there is that unicorn shape there available over the five chord, the tonic diminished. I mean, these little things, right? They just take us out of sort of boring five one cadences. They add all this, all these juicy little chromatic movements really to the inner harmony. That's what they're all about. But then this is just another great example of, you know, so often we think of a diminished chord as just a stack of minor thirds, but we can add these other notes. And then you think, oh, I'll add the other notes from the diminished scale. No, 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 no. Most often, these functional harmony songs are using this particular shape, right? This sort of A over B flat, or this B flat diminished triad with the major seven, the unicorn chord for the stupid like me, the unicorn chord with the little horn on top. 
it works so well. Finally, we have the flat five diminished. You hear this all the time. Notice it's the same notes. It's a B flat diminished triad with a major seven on top. And in the key of B flat, the flat five is an F flat. You'll often see this written like an E diminished seven because no one wants to read F flat. That's fine. We're going to use both because we don't care. <laughs> we, are, we are in harmonic gangsters. We just don't care at all. Uh, so this is an E diminished seven, but check it out in the voicing B flat, D flat, F flat, and A natural. Uh, another example of this unicorn shape that you just hear all the time. I'll show you where. So it's in this walk up from the four to the one over the five. This flat five diminished, it's actually just a tonic diminished, truly, because it's resolving upon itself back to the tonic. It just so happens that the tonic is over the five in the bass. What does that mean? You hear it all the time, right? It's a very churchy movement. How about the last four bars on the A section of Rhythm Changes? Check it out. You know what I mean? Oh, there's some in harmonic gangster stuff going on on the G7 as well. So here we have, right, our, like the last four bars of a Rhythm Changes on the A section where it goes. Right, this sort of walk up, E flat to E to F. It's not really ever an F though, is it? It's usually a one over a five, a B flat over F, which means this E diminished seven, right? B flat diminished triad with A on top, can resolve to a one chord. Just like the tonic diminished resolves to the tonic, it's the same principle, just the bass is different. Right, flat five to the five, where we have the one. One, one diminished to one. It's the same thing as our first principle. Check out this second section. Might as well put a, another unicorn over there too. That kind of voice leading, right? I mean, how often do you go from four all the time, right? How many times have you heard someone do that? It sounds so familiar when you hear it, right? It's there, it's in the music. It is amongst the masters. It's all about that triad, that major triad shape, a half step down from the tonic. In this case, like an A triad over our B flat, the unicorn shape can be dropped too. It could be in all kinds of different inversions, but it's so, so handy. All right, that's it for me. Did you hear the secret unicorn? It was in there. There's a secret unicorn hidden in there and a whole different way to use the shape. If you found that secret unicorn, put it into the chat. It's a mythical beast. I hope you caught it. All right, that's it for me. Uh, brought to you by Open Studio, of course. Go to openstudiojazz.com for all your jazz lesson needs. Until next time, happy practicing.